ಗಂಗನಾಧಿಪತೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ವಿತ್ ಆರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ಗುರು ವಾಚಕ ಕೋವಾಯ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮನ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಭಗವಾನ್ let's take a look at the introductory verses but before that i just want to mention last time we established that this work is not for the pashu it's not for the animals <laughs> animalistic humans nor is it for the people who are into dwaita dualistic religion and it's not even for the people who are into vishishta dwaita or bhakti Uh, really this teaching is on the platform of vivarta vada vivarta means that the world the ego the mind god and everything is an illusory appearance we still see it we still experience it and we actually feel like we're a part of it but really we're not and that teaching the practice of which leads to the realization of emptiness is the gateway or the bridge to the highest teaching of ajatta ajatta means the world never was it doesn't exist uh not that it exists but it's kind of unreal uh, that's vivartavada ajatavada is the world never existed it is not neither is the ego the mind the individual uh, that is all maya that's all illusory appearance uh, so when we rise from vivartavada to ajatavada we do so by means of this teaching and so this is the key this is the door the bridge to the highest realization so let's take a look at the introductory verses first of all the extent of this guru vachaka kovai is quite remarkable it's got 85 chapters in the first section 84 in the second 62 in the third and one in the appendix 232 chapters and that's a total of 1263 verses. So we're not going to do a video on each verse. <laughs> Although we could. It would take a long time. But I think I'm going to try to cover a chapter in one video. I'll have to uh, summarize quite a bit, but that's all right. You can read the book on your own. I've included a link to download the ebook in the description below here. So let's take a look at the first introductory verse obeisances to the guru this light that is these verses of the guru's teachings which destroys the base nature of mind i and mine shines as self illuminating our hearts whenever we long with increasing despair for grace what is grace well in another place bhagwan defines grace as self as guru as brahman so actually if we get the guru's grace that means we become like the guru and what is guru is guru just one man sitting on a chair and teaching or whatever no guru is the principle of the absolute truth and as such that principle is present everywhere and in everything and it is our real nature only we cover it over with mind this individual ego existence and all the the bodies and the nonsense that we do but it's really there all the time as the substrate 
Uh, so when we long for grace, what are we longing for? <laughs> We're longing for the Guru's teaching to become manifest in our heart. So when we say heart, again, we don't mean this physical heart on the left side. We mean the heart of reality, the non-dual awareness of awareness that is the self or the reality. So all these words are actually synonymous. Huh? Self, reality, guru, Brahman, awareness, any, any kind of terminology that references the absolute. That is one and the same. It's not that guru is a separate individual. No, the whole point of being guru <laughs> is that one has realized the non-existence of individuality, the non-existence of the world. And this is ajatta, the platform of this teaching. Two, the eternal one graciously took the form of guru, Ramana, and lovingly claimed me, who was a victim to the delusion, I am the body, as his own reforming me with the sense, I am not this filthy inert body. May my head rest beneath the feet of the benign, gracious, silent guru. So the eternal one is another, another name, another synonym for the absolute truth, huh? the singularity. <laughs> All these words are really one and the same thing. Or not, it's not a thing, actually. <laughs> because to be a thing, it has to exist separately from other things. But the absolute, as we already mentioned, is in everything. It is everything. And uh, how that is so will be explained here in, in great detail. So let's look at the next verse. The perfect Jnana Guru, Ramana, ably and precisely presents the right meaning on many contradictory subjects and passes apt judgment over various discussions, revealing the one supreme truth that lies in harmony among them all. May my head rest beneath his feet. Now, this is a symbol or a metaphor that we see a lot. Uh, may my head rest beneath the feet of the guru. The head represents the ego, the sense of I am an individual separate from everybody else. So <clears throat> this illusory delusion <laughs> has to come under the control of the teachings of the guru. So that's the meaning. The guru here represents the feet or the self, huh? Sri Guru, Param Param, means the supreme destination, which can only be Brahman. Huh? So when our head, when our ego, comes under the control of this Guru, of this supreme teaching, then we have surrendered to the Guru's feet, and we have also attained self-realization. Let's go on. The name and origin of this work. This clear light of supreme truth was not lit by my innocent infant mind, which has not seen the truth. It was lit by the fully ripened supreme knowledge of my master, Sri Ramana. So the mind is like a baby. Hmm? It's foolish, actually. The mind is ignorant of its real nature and so many other things also. So the method for reforming the mind is to look for the source of the mind. Who am I? Because I am is the original thought. And from that thought, all other thoughts cascade like a waterfall. The Buddha calls it papancha. Papancha means a cascade of thoughts. Uh, beginning with I, 
I, being a separate individual, am, I exist in this world. <laughs> and then I think this, I desire that, I have this, I know that, I'm doing this, I'm going here, I'm, I'm getting something else, you know. All these things are simply delusions. And uh, he also mentions the fully ripened wisdom. Huh? Atitivra, the Atitivra Adhikari, which we mentioned in the previous video in the chart, is the highest qualification. Adhikari means one who is qualified. And tivra means ripened. Atitivra means fully ripened. When the fruit is fully ripened, it falls from the tree all by itself. It doesn't need you to come along and pick it. <laughs> That's artificial. So when this knowledge ripens, then all of a sudden, all by itself, the illumination happens. We don't have to beg for it. We don't have to get it from anybody else. We don't have to do anything for it. Uh, even though we do so much sadhana and so much meditation and so much other uh, things to gain self-realization, self-realization is not the result of any of those activities. Because why? Self-realization is already our nature. It's not something that we get or add or create anew. It's already there. It's been there forever. Uh, that's the meaning of eternal. It's already existing as the reality. We simply take away the coverings <laughs> that have been obscuring it, and then it becomes fully manifest. Many instructions to root out ignorance, that is, inattention to self, were given by my beloved eternal companion, Sri Ramana, whose real form is that, Satchit, which exists, shines, and reveals itself as I. I now recount some of those instructions which my mind has grasped and preserved. Well, he's being very humble here. Actually, Sri Muruganar was fully self-realized himself, having got full grace <laughs> from Sri Ramana by his constant association, deep study of the teachings. And because that's his real nature, like it is yours and mine. I, being there where Ramana embraced me, will recount a little of the nature of the Supreme Truth, which I have come to know in my life of divine union with him, my master. So now he's using uh, a metaphor, which is known as atirasa, adirasa, uh, the original or highest, complete, full rasa or taste of relationship. So this Adi Rasa is devotion to the self, love of the self, not as the ego, but as the supreme truth and as the universal consciousness. I now compose and string together all the supreme truth that I come to know through the divine glance bestowed upon me by my Lord Guru Ramana, who destroyed my delusion caused by the ego sense, leaving me in a state of clarity. So, through this guru, he has come to the supreme truth, but not by his own efforts, by the power of the divine glance of the guru. And by the power of that glance, one becomes like the guru himself. This is the secret. This is the door. Uh, by devotion to the guru as self, one reaches that state himself. 
And uh, he also says, being there where Ramana embraced me. That means that he is still in the same consciousness that he experienced when he attained union with Ramana. And so this is the method for attaining the Ajatta platform. The benefit or fruit of this work. The benefit of this light of supreme truth is the understanding that there is not the least thing such as attainment, since the Supreme Self is the ever-attained one whole. Thus, the mental wanderings caused by striving towards Dharma, Artha, and Kama are also removed. This whole samsara, this whole world, and all of our many births and sufferings are all because of striving for other things uh, instead of just remaining in the Supreme Self. So when those desires and when those actions go away, then we realize that we already are the Supreme Truth. We don't have to attain anything. It's already there. And this is a jatta. Finally, self, which is one's own true nature, is the substratum of all happiness in this and in other worlds. Therefore, to be firmly established in self, unshaken by thoughts concerning the various other paths, karmas, yogas, etc., that lead only to the pleasures of this and other worlds, is the fruit of this work. So if you get this, <laughs> you got it, baby. <laughs> This is the supreme absolute truth. Om Tatsat. Om Harihi Om.